Joining me now to discuss this, Dean Hurlston, Vice President of Council Watch, the outfit that uh, collated all of these alarming figures. Dean, welcome. Well, thank God for your transparency, because I have to say, I often look at what councillors are paid. I'm often interested in what their budget allocations are, given they're supposed to do the basics and we drive around our suburbs and the basics are not being done. Um, how did you get hold of this information? And are you surprised at these figures yourself? Thanks, Peter. Uh, we actually got a hold of the information from councils themselves. Uh, we actually took it out of a lot of their annual reports and FOI'd them where we needed to. We currently have over 600 FOIs in the local government sector, so we are sort of digging for a lot of information. Sadly, we're not surprised. Um, this is not necessarily the right level of salaries, but we're not surprised that councils are yet again earning that label fat cats. How can Old Mate out at the Hume Council justify $550,000? His budget responsibility out there would be, a, we wouldn't even pay the stamps in the PM's office, uh, and it's just a very small area compared to what the Prime Minister has under his remit. How do you justify a salary like that? So look, sadly, the, the issue in local government, Peter, is that they actually benchmark their salaries based on their staff headcount. They don't look at the population. We see some council CEOs earning over $400,000 with a population of around 50,000 residents, yet an inner city council might have a similar salary and a population of 120 or 130,000. Um, we really do have a bit of the Wild West going on here. And what we are seeing is councillors who are setting these salaries are not actually really aware mm. of what the community wants. The community wants to drive what they, you know, what they expect for this dollar. They, they want bang for their buck. Well, what can ratepayers do about it? So we would say contact your local councillor and make it really clear what you want the CEO's remuneration tied to. When we're seeing salaries of, you know, four fifty, five hundred thousand dollars dollars $500,000 across councils, and those same councils, like Hume, have some of the worst customer service stats, they have some of the worst reports from the Ombudsman, Vago, and from the Auditor General around, you know, the way they spend money and the way they make decisions, and a lot of really unhappy residents who don't get their complaints answered, that tells you that their remuneration is not linked properly to performance. What we want is for the local government minister to get off her backside and actually mandate that there needs to be reform in the CEO salary. And mm. the way it should be reformed is that salaries are based on population, you get a base, and if you actually deliver really good services and your residents tell you you're a really good council, you solve problems and fix complaints, you should get performance bonuses based on that feedback, not half a million dollars to turn up and turn the lights on. Thank God for Council Watch, Dean Hurlston. We wouldn't know about half of this. Thanks for your time.